you very much, Jago and uh, uh, Billy, for those words. Uh, very much appreciated. Uh, I'd like to thank also Dara Cafferty, uh, Commodore of Baystone Sandy Club, for facilitating today's launch. And it's a fantastic venue to host it in. I uh, couldn't think of a better spot for my dad, given his association with sailing um, the harbour or boats or whatever. Uh, Billy just touched on the background to the books. Um, it was really back in the 1950s that my father started to collect old postcards, photographs, documents relating to greystones. Um, it was 45 years ago this year, 1973, where he had his first ever exhibition of old photographs that was in the old St. Patrick's National School up on uh, Touche Place. Um, I actually looked at an old press clipping, I think, from the Wicklow people at that time, and it mentioned about uh, 1,400 people attended that particular exhibition of photographs, uh, which, if you think about it, when Greystones was much, much smaller then. So I guess the attraction of seeing the town as it used to be, you know, you don't have to, you didn't have to get the internet then, or Google photographs, or whatever, there were no books, so I think they had to extend the period of when that exhibition ran from. Um, and then it was really Dr. Leslie Doyle who, um, persuaded my man, to, my dad, to actually uh, put together the books. And that was 25 years ago in 1993. I can recall my father was not overly certain about the success of a book. I had to be really arm twisted into producing the very first one. Um, and as soon as that went out, then a second and a third, and 11 years ago, book number seven came out. Um, and obviously there was material from that book that wasn't, or held over from that book, and then new material came along. and. My dad was always badgering me, when are we going to do another book? Um, which, so we, over the last 11 years, we have been collating uh, the guts of uh, book number eight um, until he actually passed away a couple of years ago. So um, I do mention in the introduction to the book, there's two particular contributors who are very, very significant. There would not be eight books, but for the likes of uh, Sam French and Henrietta French, his sister. Mm. A lot of you will know Sam French, or Robert French, his grandfather, took a lot of the old photographs of not just Greystones, but the whole of Ireland. They're all in the National Photographic Archive. Any old postcard you see from 1880s, 1870s, 1890s, is usually a Robert French photograph. Um, so he was a, uh, quite a regular visitor to Greystones, so we're quite blessed in one way that we have a lot of photographs that he took off Greystones in the very early years. Um, now he also, um, Sam French had uh, got some of the glass negatives, or glass, uh, yeah, the glass negatives from some of the photographs, which are different to the ones in Dublin, which were bequeathed to my father as well. And there's a few of those that are in the current book, which I got a photographic um, restoration specialist in England to use the latest scanning technology on. Um, some of them have appeared in the previous books, but they're not as clear as what you'll see in this current book as well. So that's uh, something to bear in mind when you look through the book. Um, and the other uh, main person driving force um, is Dr. Leslie Doyle, who some of you may remember. Um, the Doyles are one of the oldest, if not the oldest, family in Greystones. Most of the harbour buildings around here, Trafalgar Road, um, the Bethel Terrace, the Beach House, or whatever, were built by the Doyle family. Um, actually, where we are at the moment is pretty historic as well because it's literally less than 100 yards away in 1839 so six years before even the famine happened 16 years before even the railway came to Greystones um, the schooner the Bellevue was built just up behind where Wavecrest is up there where the hoarding is at the moment and launched over the rocks before the slip had even been built um, in around February March of 1839 um, now in the book you will see um, I've put in the details of its maiden voyage Back then, Whitehaven in Cumbria was the main coal exporting port for coal coming into Ireland. All the harbours up and down the east coast, Rush, Bullock, uh, Bray, Wicklow, Skerries, little uh, schooners were back and forth constantly bringing in the coal. And uh, John Doyle uh, built, had it built behind the house up there um, and was launched over the uh, rocks using logs in March of 1839. Dr. Leslie Doyle's daughter, I should mention, Barbara, Do uh, Barbara Barker is her name. She lives in Manchester, she's not here today, but she has been a, a fountain of all sort of information and knowledge on, on research because she opened up uh, Leslie's sort of archive of material. He has a lot of journals, a lot of correspondence, where he'd actually talked to a lot of the old people in Greystones down the years and recorded 
information which would have been lost in time but for that. Um, there's a few little snippets in the book about the launching of the Bellevue in 1839. Um, some little snippets also about John Doyle, one of which is like a heavy snowfall at Greystones, which is pretty rare back then. The town had run out of the town had actually run out of um, uh, flour, so he sent like pack horses over to um, Newcastle to bring in flour to the town. Uh, so those are all. Uh, unpublished little snippets, which thanks to Barbara Barker, Leslie's uh, daughter, um, we can now actually include in, in print in a book, which is wonderful to have. Um, I should also mention Andrew Evans. Where's Andrew? He's here. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Andrew has actually written the forward, forward to the book. Um, now, Andrew is the great grandson of Arthur Evans, who you'll read about in the book, who for over 90 years in the Evans family wave crest, which is the house just up there behind which Bellevue was built. Uh, was one of the main importers of coal into Greystones. Um, now Andrew, mainly from his uncle Leonard, has acquired a lot of material and documents which he's made available to this, to me to put together in this book as well. So uh, in the same way that I want to thank uh, Dr. Leslie Doyle's daughter, I to thank also Andrew and his wife Val, particularly because she has actually dug out bits that Andrew wasn't aware he actually had in this archive of documents and material as well. So that's, um, I want to give a thanks to that. And just sticking on the maritime theme, given that we're in the sailing club, um, there are two pages on the McGill family. Now, most people in Grey Songs will probably never have heard of the McGill family. The name doesn't really, I don't think there are no McGills around anymore. But you will see on the back inside of the back cover. Um, there's a list of all the residents in Greystones in 1876. Uh, Joseph McGill was the occupier of what we now call Cool Agrina, which is a pretty uh, substantial building. Um, now his son uh, was born in a little house on Trafalgar Road at the entrance opposite where the Harbour Barber is. Uh, Brighton Lodge is the name of that house in 1854. Um, there's the this is again from the Doyle family making available uh, records. At the age of 15 years and three months, his son, Joseph Edward, was on a ship going around Cape Horn up to the west coast of South America as a boy seaman. And he did it all again the following year. But I put the journal entry in as he went around, when he went around uh, Cape Horn. Uh, had to beating, you know, beating the ice off the sails or whatever. You can just imagine, like a, he was only a boy at that time, but. I guess they started them early on Trafalgar Road back in those days. <laughs> Age, we probably younger than some of the junior members of this club or whatever. Yeah. He was on a three-masted park, sailing around Cape Horn, going up to the top gallant mast to Greece or whatever, sent up there in the rolling, you know, the Southern Ocean or whatever, in the teeth of a gale or whatever. But um, that's in the book. It's a, a nice thing to have as well. I mean, there's a lot of ground covered. It's not just the harbour. There's the hotels, suffragette movement, World War One, um, the lifeboat, coast guards, um, forty odd pages as you go up Church Road, down through the years. My father, mainly through the French family, actually they were, I guess for want of a better word, hoarders. If you could call them that, they hoarded a lot of old receipts and invoices, never threw anything out, which is good because now we have them, and a lot of those are now included in the book. From they seem to make receipts and invoices much prettier back in those days, but still, <laughs> <laughs> not the ones you get now with a till receipt or whatever. Um, so that section of the book, you can literally walk up Church Road, almost shop by shop, down through the years, um, down the Chooch Place, down Trafalgar Road, up to Victoria Road. Uh, I've also put in that section the most maybe some people are not aware, but the, the road used to run from Trafalgar Road diagonally. You'll notice the redevelopment down the Church Road of Mount View at the moment behind the hoarding opposite mm -hmm. Super Value and Macaulay's. And the, the shape or the line of that building with the line of the building, which what well, used to be Moran's fish shop, with his Dooley's, Dooley's um, auctioneers at the moment. Um, and I put two town plans of Grace on one from 1876, one from 1883 which show the original line of the, the very first road in Greystones uh, that ran from the railway bridge down towards where the station and it wasn't until St. Patrick's Church got built 1864-ish that they actually ran Church Road up straight as we know it today 
Um, and there's some photographs, you remember the old school and the old sexton's house behind where the Jewish apartments, or the Jewish court apartments are today, or whatever. So they're in the book just to, um, you'd see the, 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 the line of that original road. Um, but um, I mean, there's almost 300 pages in the book, so there's a lot of ground covered, uh, as I say. So I'd just like to thank everybody for coming along today and um, happy reading. And one thing I want to also mention is um, the printer, Joe Bean and Marcello Press, he still gets half a dozen random phone calls a year from people ringing up looking for copies of the previous seven books. Um, it's my hope that in 2019 I might do a reprint of book number one, and depending on how that it goes, do subsequent reprints of the books two to seven. Um, unfortunately, they don't, apart from the last one, they don't actually exist in electronic form, so they actually be created from scratch again, but I'll hopefully do a reprint of book number one next year, and as I say, depending on the success of that, do subsequent uh, reprints at one a year, hopefully. But um, ho hopefully uh, you'll enjoy this current book. It's, it's got color in it for the first time, uh, which adds a lot of information and um, maps and uh, documents as well. So. Again, just thank you very much for attending and uh, happy reading. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.